Hello viewers, Super GT here, and for the very first time in a while, back on Forza Motorsport 7. And we're going to kick it off with the most dangerous place in the known universe, and that is Monza Turn 1. And this is the beginning of the downfall of society. You can see it there as the Hot Wheels car comes flying in out of nowhere. And when that happens, it's a sign of true masochistic things to come as we come flying in here i think we can look back at this incident as the beginning of the end this is where the destruction began this is where the nuclear bombs first fell and it was a sad sad time for humanity monza turn one that is where it all began um, but fortunately that was just a bad dream we continue through turn one in the trusty, ever trusty Ford GT from 2005. I'm in sixth place, or sixth place, as we come into the second hairpin, a chicane, and all manner of chaos kicks off once again, going all the way up into second place. So a grand rise through the ranks as I go into the wall there, Lesmo 1. Uh, unfortunately, that race kind of ended there, as the leader was already about a million miles ahead. So we move on to Prague, going with the, the good old Viper here. And this was actually a really good race. This was an amazing race. As we come through turn one, lots of contact. And uh, the other Viper gets swung around. Now I was actually really enjoying my time back here on Forza, just taking it really nice and relaxed. I wasn't bothered about winning. Wasn't bothered about where I finished too much, just choosing any old car and just giving it a good go and just seeing where I could finish. And I enjoyed it more, there was less pressure. As we go past Marple here, up the inside, through the long corners, I still got the uh, the track ribbon on the left, or the either side of the track, as I was last playing the, uh, the regulations beta hopper, so that I left those on. But the reason why I haven't had many videos, I mean, today, releasing, uh, releasing this video on a Tuesday, and my last video was Tuesday last week, so it's been a week, and I've had an injury with my foot, and I've been on so much medication trying to sort it out, and I've, I'm basically in pain, so I set myself to the shadow realm, or I set my foot to the shadow realm, and I can't really recover at quite a quick rate, so annoyingly, I mean, I can play on the simulator, but ideally I need to sort of rest my foot. Of course, on the sim, you're pressing the pedals all the time. So that kind of prompted me to come over to the Forza world once again, as we get a nice portion of contact. Stupid track limits here, ignoring them, as I think everyone else does. Uh, still not sure why the track limits don't just go to the wall on that chicane. But um, yeah, so that kind of prompted my return to Forza because I haven't played this in a while. I did make that uh, video about a week or so ago about what Forza 8 should get right or what it needs to get right for when it releases and that's quite an interesting topic which I think we can make another whole dedicated video on because of course E3 as I bottle this race here as I completely through the chicane of death here I actually got it all wrong on the pre-chicane of death. But anyway, yeah, E3's just happened, and there was no announcement about Forza 8, no announcement at all. And But there was an announcement, interestingly, about Project Scarlet, so the next console. I don't know if it's the next generation or if it's sort of a new Xbox One X, sort of a new version of the Xbox One. I don't know how that's going to work, but um, that's definitely a very big topic for discussion as to whether Forza 8 will come out with that console. I think we can make an entire dedicated video about that, and I, and I will, because um, it's quite a big subject, of course, Forza 8, and whether or not uh, it's going to come out on that console. When When is it going to come out? We don't know. There was no date. Um, but they do need to get it right, of course, because Forza 7 was very disappointing upon release, and that was ominously um, matched with the release of the Xbox One X, um, Project Scorpio and this is potentially 
a release title potentially we don't know potentially a release title for project scarlet whatever that may be but we have to wait uh, keenly for that as i run this guy slightly wide but he just gets the run into the love tunnel so this this race is hotting up the leader has kind of bolted here as we all run a little bit wide through the double left hander coming back on to the bridge into that slipstream, look at the power of the Viper coming through the uh, coming through past the Corvette, up the inside into second place. Will I bottle it? Yes, I will. My skill's not quite up to scratch at this point here. Coming through the chicane of death, then yeah, there we go. Proved it once, once and for all. As he um, rests in peace, I'll say rest in peace, but actually rests in fire and flames as he gets caught up in an inferno there through the chicane. And we're going to come through to finish third. Really good race, though. Really good fun, that. As we move then to the Bernie's Alps. And a nice, tidy pile-up with the Ferrari F50 oh, facing the wrong way. Finding our way into the top ten. Coming through turn number one at the top of the hill. What is going to go on here? Actually, not too bad. Quite clean. Fairly clean. We've gone for the Aston Martin this time around. As we find our way through this fast chicane. Far too many people make contact with each other and it's only going to slow them down gain a couple of positions and find myself now in seventh place it's coming down the hill far sweeping corner and all of a sudden a big pack of discos appeared there not sure why not, really not sure why but just seemed to happen quite unusual as we come through this turn now you might be able to hear a load of people talking in the background i forgot to disable party chat or disable game chat by going into my own party but that explains why you might hear some murmurings in the background some chatter as there were quite a few people it's actually refreshing you know to hear that because it's been quite a long time i think i think the party mode kind of killed game chat in many ways as people sit in parties and talk that way but it's nice to kind of hear people talking in the game and they weren't smack talking each other it wasn't some baby cry in the background or some parent shouting at a kid it was actually just a couple of grown adults just talking reasonably about the races that they're doing so that was a, a refreshing change um, but that explains that find our way up into sixth place coming through the far sweeping chicanes once again and i actually really like this version of bernie's apps i think this is the best circuit of bernie's apps this short one is this ferrari comes in with a dive bomb of the century and I retake the position that was almost certainly never going to work the the phantom discos packet returns and again just really not sure why just can't just can't figure out why that discos packet was keep coming back on that corner it was it was just an absolute mystery to me uh, coming through at the end of lap three or sorry end of lap two to finish that lap in fifth up to fourth past marple he seemed to be having a tough time in his classic Porsche and then on the final lap that four of four we're going for the podium I think I actually raced okay it's weird because um, you, know, you can come back to a game after so many times not playing or so so long not playing it but it all comes back quite quickly I think with Forza I think the main thing you really have to get used to is just throttle control and then coasting through the corners to really get the best turning ability of the car so it does require a lot of patience to get right but I think once you get those little factors down, then you actually get back into this game quite quickly. You never quite lose it, do you? Not that I really had it to begin with, but we crossed the line in third, so a decent result there. And this was a really good race as well. Uh, Noble M600 at Spa, so coming down into turn one, and you're pre predicting uh, a maelstrom of chaos, but it actually doesn't happen as I take quite a nice, tidy, tight line and escape from the mayhem, I think presumably quite a few people died back there but we didn't catch that on camera so in third place coming through Eau Rouge doing my best to try to obey the track limits I think I just failed in my quest at the top of the hill as we come through the Kemmel Strait into the chicane and just going to fast forward it a little bit so Marple in that Porsche I think is really track dependent as it normally is Depending on, depends on which kind of track that comes up, your car will do better or worse. And I think this is one of the tracks where his car did very well. So he's kind of kind of run off into the distance. But we've got a nice little battle here. 
with the Belgian, sorry, Bel with the Brazilian in also the M600. I think the M600 is a very, very solid car for S Class, which is what we are racing here. And I think S Class for me is my sort of go to de facto class. It's the one I normally go back to when I'm unsure with what to race. I always race S Class. I've always prefer sort of S and A class, that kind of region, as once you get to R, it gets maybe a little bit too quick and the racing quality drops, and when you go down to like C, um, the speed just feels a little bit too slow, although the racing can be very close, the racing can be very very good in the low classes, in fact it should be closer, you can race much closer with each other because the reaction times aren't quite so high or quite so sharp, you can afford to be so close to each other in those lower lobbies. I just feel like the speed isn't quite there. So normally I find a nice happy medium here in S-Class. I think this is, for me, the sort of the pinnacle. The other uh, the other noble there getting a, a bit of a moment on the exit of the chicane. I was at Spa recently, uh, so you may have seen the karting videos that I did. And they've done really well, actually. So thank you for the response for those. I'm really glad that the karting has done well on the channel. Um, there will be more of that very soon, so more karting throughout the year. I'll be doing around normally every three weeks or so from now until November. So plenty more to come on that front. And just really happy, yeah, that the response has been very positive to the karting. Glad you guys have liked it. And one of the videos is up to uh, 250,000 views now, so it's very, very good indeed. So this is lap number two, coming up towards the final chicane with a noble in close attention and we get our breaking point near enough on point but not quite there maybe a tiny bit too late just enough though to keep the position as we cross the line to be in the third lap so coming up into this chicane and the pressure's on the cauldron has been entered as i make a big big mistake under pressure and this is the thing i would say about coming back to a game when you're a little bit rusty I feel as though my pace was not too bad. It's just the little bit. It's just the consistency that uh, it eludes you when you come back to a game after a long time out. So I was just making quite a lot of mistakes. I was having good fun though. I would say that I, I really enjoyed my session back here on Forza Seven. I wasn't taking it too seriously. Just whatever happened happened. Didn't care too much, and actually really enjoyed it. So coming up towards the uh, Blanchemont for the final time, lap three of three get through there nicely once again the other noble right on my tail it's been a really good race between the two of us i think we've probably got exactly the same tune and i've just gone a little bit deep and he's just going to go through with a really good move actually took took advantage fully and rage fully intensifies once again as we cross the line so move on to the final race of the video gone for the s7 here at Road America. So great circuit this. And I think a lot of the time um, the, the quality of the lobby does come down to the tracks that get picked out because sometimes you can get very silly tracks coming up. You get a VIR coming up for the 8 millionth time that day. And they get unceremoniously shoved wide here at turn 2 and lose a fair amount of grip, traction and positions. Actually, only two positions, but um, yeah, still not ideal. But yeah, the the tracks that were coming up were fairly good. You know, Spa, good track to have. The Prague circuit was one that worked quite well in these in these cars. Road America works well in S class, but you just don't want the really small tracks coming up too much. And that is something that I would say needs to be really fixed for the next game. I did mention, actually, I don't think I really mentioned this in my what FM8 needs video. I, I kind of put it up in text during the video, but Forza 8 really needs a better track voting system because it really is horribly skewed to the tracks that have more configuration. So VIR comes up so often because it has about 10 different configurations and then of course when you scale up because of the different weather as well you've got night time you've got rain and then you've got like 30 configurations whereas Laguna Seca has only got one which is Laguna Seca forward during the day uh, so there's this massive sort of imbalance in the voting system and surely it would only take you know it 
it would take one person a few hours just to go through all of the hoppers and just make a list of every track. And you know, all you need to do is make a table, all of the hoppers on one side on one axis, and then all of the uh, tracks on the other axis, and just go through and go. This this hopper needs this track, this track, this track, this track. Get rid of a load. Of, so, for example, with the IR, you can get rid of a load of the nonsensical ones that shouldn't be there, and just narrow it down to, let's say, just the main configuration during the day. And you can just get rid of all the silly configurations that don't need to be there. And then the vote should be a lot more balanced. Plus, I think nighttime comes up a little bit too often. Like, it's, it's evenly on a par with daytime. But I think more people would prefer just to race during the day. I mean, that's just my thought. But maybe maybe other people don't agree with that. Um, but the rain as well, kind of in balance. The rain, I think, has had really sort of weird implementation in this game. Because most of the time you vote for rain, and it's not rain, it's day. Well, it's, it's normal weather and then it's foggy for a lap and then it goes back to daytime which isn't rain at all it's so the way that that's implemented is a little bit sketchy and that was kind of one of the main features of the game in the trailers um, and and the demo how the, the wet weather is kind of really powered by the xbox one x but the way that's actually implemented is actually quite strange but that's just my thought as we come up to the back of this Viper, I just kind of ran out of time. That Viper had really good straight line speed, but I had really good handling through sort of the second half of the lap. So through this half of the lap, I wasn't good, but then through the second half, I was catching up. I got through to finish second, so plenty of seconds and thirds on my mini comeback here. But ultimately, really enjoyed my time back in Forza 7. We'll make a couple more, and we'll make a video on looking ahead to Forza 8. But that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know your thoughts. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and hit the like button if you did enjoy it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.